Hey everyone, and welcome back to my completionist playthrough of the Baldur's Gate saga with SCS. And in this episode, it's time to explore more of uh, the Walking's Promenade, visit some places and stuff. But our first order of business yes, here sir. is to pay a visit to our good buddy Galump. Welcome to my humble establishment. Right, jolly day, eh? We're going to take a gander at his bookies and his scrolls. He's one of the scroll vendors in the game that we're going to rob at a later point. Right now, what we want is this scroll case. We're just going to buy that. And this is finally going to free up some space in our inventory. Finally, we're going to have a container to put all these scrolls into. I'm just going to leave out these unidentified green scrolls. That we're going to identify at a later point. So yeah, much better. Also, a great thing in Baldur's Gate 2 is that there are more multiple copies of each container especially with um, a certain mod component that I installed from BG2 Tweaks. Uh, but generally, even in the unmodded game, there are multiple scroll cases, multiple uh, jam bags. Uh, so uh, managing our inventory with uh, those types of items is going to be much easier. I'm just double checking what I want to... Oh yeah, I want to sell the jewelry as well. And I think we're fine, because now we're going to talk to Hess. He's gonna be friendly to him, and uh, we can ask him about, you know, some inns, magical shops, temples, and whatnot, but we just want to see his services right now and sell some of these basic items. I am going to get rid of these throwing axes. Uh, Sinashira is actually pretty close to dual classing, uh, because she's pretty close to level 9, or should be uh, pretty close, and uh, she won't be even able to uh, throw the, uh, or use the throwing axes. I think we can sell all this. I am going to sell these bracers of uh, AC8. Yeah, the splint mails, 16 gold, the heavy crossbow for 10. Yeah, so as you can see, by just selling all these basic goods, basic equipment, we can get some, some gold. Also, as you can uh, see, uh, a lot of the different uh, equipment pieces that we know uh, from Baldur's Gate 1 and also jewelry is going to be worth less. Uh, so for example long swords plus one in Baldur's Gate 1 we could sell for around 650 gold I think before their value depreciation. They're basically a lot of the items in Baldur's Gate 2 are worth about half as much or like around 60 percent of what they are worth in Baldur's Gate 1. All right so that's it for now. What is it? Now there are two uh, inns here, Mithrest and the Seven Bales. This one is kind of uh, uh, Mithrest here, is supposed to be kind of like an uh, inn for uh, more wealthy people, as Largo is going to inform us. Yeah, uh, that we're kind of out of place. And uh, he's a pretty cool guy, actually. Now look about you, an evil eye from every corner unless you be loaded with coinage. Yeah, I was kicked out of this place once or twice as a youth before I found a vein of mithril. Now the bastards fawn over me, but horribly, all the while eyeing my purse. Me purse. Yeah, truly a hard life. So, of course, as always, feel free to pause, and I'm going to just present some of these conversations. Some of these are quite funny, uh, like I mentioned. Uh, a lot of conversations with nobles in Baldur's Gate 2 are really good. <laughs> Yeah, don't let the bastards look down their crooked noses at you. Alright, thanks for the advice. Uh, next we have Debutante Alicia. That's... thinks she's important. Now this girl here, Lady Lasala, which is also a very uh, similar name to a certain vampire we're going to meet later, who is just called Lasal. Uh, she actually ta it tells us about Alicia. Uh, that uh, Count Claylen managed to make her a new, like, debutante, debutante, whatever. Yeah, apparently Lady Lasala here was left heartbroken by Claylen. Yeah, and we can talk with him. It's pretty funny. My time is quick, so be brief. Yeah, the peasantry should not be allowed to walk about so freely. The stench alone makes me faint. 
Oh, Lord Awful, actually, we're going to meet uh, very soon. He's at the promenade. Promenade. Yeah, I use it for the common good, my dear. His influence. <laughs> and anyway, here's Pugni, and we can... Um, can get this gold here. We could use this place, of course, to rest. And uh, here's Rebecca. Please, seat yourselves whatever you wish. And she's going to look at us taking this one gold, and she's not going to be able to, to do anything about it. <laughs> in general, um, in Baldur's Gate 2, there's way less, like, calling the guards on you when you take stuff, even yes. in places where you would think they should call the guards on you. And somehow, in a lot of places, they don't. They don't care. Uh, here upstairs, there's a certain encounter that we're going to do, but uh, we're going to do it later, because uh, it's pretty pretty tough even without SCS, but, you know, with SCS, it is much tougher. There's going to be a couple of guys, kind of like an adventuring party, and um, it is certainly possible to do it right away after exiting Irenicus's dungeon, but it would probably require some reloads. It, it's pretty tough fight, especially with SCS, you know, with, like, no gear, no levels, no nothing. But well, we're going to be back it here soon enough done. and dispose of them. And here is, uh, just is like, Alatello de Bonito here. There. He's a mage, and that tries his hand at some uh, bardic performances. But he doesn't uh, get much success. Yeah, <laughs> It's pretty funny when you pause and, and read for yourself. I just want to showcase this, uh, this conversation with him. So uh, he sings, or attempts to sing, a little bard song, and then Patricia tells him to shut up. Because he's apparently a mage, uh, kind of a... S serving as, uh, like, security and a financial advisor, not entertainment. And Patricia there is, like, a big misandrist. She's <laughs> pretty much, like, almost the Chartil of Baldur's Gate 2. <laughs> Hello! Hello! <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, when we explore some conversation options with her, she actually reveals that uh, hates men. Yeah, we can ask her some questions and whatnot, but th this is going to be a common theme uh, with a lot of people that we can ask them about the cult wizards, that we can ask them about shadow thieves, but they generally will not know uh, anything. Speak. So yeah, we can leave here. It's actually this uh, nice Baldur's Gate 1 tavern music playing there. Here there's going to be a little humble shrine to Ilmater. We've seen also a humble shrine uh, to Ilmater in Baldur's Gate 1, in Baldur's Gate City. And that's generally the common thing, theme. You have my greetings, and uh, here, yeah, we can ask about Ilmater. And um, the services of the clerics I wanted to show you, and they are um, actually, different clerics will have like different selections of potions and whatnot. She is actually a great vendor because she is a reli reliable source of potions of genius for our scribing sessions. So it's really nice. She has a big stock of them. We're going to be able to come here and purchase some if we want to scribe some scrolls. And they also generally are going to have more scrolls. Um, yeah, some raised dead scrolls, some restoration. Restoration is going to be a spell that we're going to use periodically because uh, it removes level level drain, and there's quite a few creatures that can level drain us in Baldur's Gate 2, and sometimes it's it's just going to happen. And also, when it comes to donations and uh, getting uh, reputation bonuses out of it, uh, you might remember that in Baldur's Gate 1, I donated a couple hundred gold to get a couple of... Um, quick reputation points so that we can get that max reputation that much sooner. Um, and in Baldur's Gate 2, I will just, I think, donate once, because at this point it will take uh, 700 gold, actually, to uh, get one reputation point at where we are now, at 11 reputation, and the next one would cost us 900. So it is like, you know, 1600 gold, it is reasonable at, even at this point to to purchase like two quick reputation points. So I think I'm going to just donate once, or maybe... You know what, Let, let's donate twice, but then, you know, it just gets higher and higher uh, every every way you do this, every time you do this. So, let's just get Things two reputation well points. For us, yes? It's a dangerous path, but we manage well for ourselves. 
Yes, yes, Yoshimo. <laughs> so now we we are in this like popular reputation bracket, so that's why some of our NPCs had some comments about that. And uh, now this bouncer here, this guard, uh, th that's introduced by the enhanced edition. Even if we kill him, uh, we cannot open this door unless we have Nira and we are on a certain quest of hers. So I'm not sure if we're ever going to do this because I don't really like Nira's quests. Um, but anyway, uh, this bouncer here, this is kind of a cool concept that they've done with this place though. Because um, it's more of a third edition from d and I think, but uh, this is going to be kind of like a magical shop and an enclave of the Red Wizards. And that's kind of um, like in the third edition, like in that timeline, I guess, uh, the Red Wizards uh, try to spread their influence from Fey by setting up different magical shops in like different areas and different cities so that uh, they can, you know, like uh, basically get information out of these cities and, you know, like spread their own machinations and schemes there. And uh, this is one such shop. And also, if you've played Neverwinter Nights uh, Shadows of Andrentide, there's actually a quest involving uh, that kind of thing where you can help a, a red wizard set up a shop. We are all heroes. You and Boo and I, hamsters and rangers everywhere, rejoice! Yes, yes, Minsk. <laughs> uh, but yeah, in, in Never One Turn Nights Shadows of Undern Tide, you can uh, either s help that red wizard to set up a shop like that, or you can actually uh, deny him that opportunity. Anyway, here's Myra. Can ask her some questions, but you know she's not really going to know anything, and uh, she's just a standard merchant without much uh, good stuff, just some simple kind of projectiles. And yes. Uh, now this circus we're going to visit a little later after we just do some initial ex exploration. Here there's an interesting character I'm going to just showcase right now before I forget. <coughs> Uh, he is called Radil, which is a very similar to name to Dradil, whom we've met in Baldur's Gate 1, that elven mage, the guide to Baldurran. And we're actually going to meet Dradil later on in Baldur's Gate 2, but this is going to be in much sadder circumstances. Anyway, normally if you do not have Minsk in your party, he just has like some one-line response. But if you do have Minsk, there's a, actually a unique, kind of fun conversation between them. Yeah, actually, if you talk with Minsk, yes. evil stands aside. Yes. Oh yeah. So and now it triggered. So basically, he's far away from from home, from Kalimshan, which is way down south, and uh, he's looking for directions. And Minsk, of course, is for the first time in Afkatla here with us, and uh, <laughs> as you will be able to read. Uh, he is actually going to ask Boo for advice and provide uh, this red eel fellow with directions. An edgy hamster. Anyway, go out of the city that way, keep on the road, turn right at Big Church, and you will be out. Most excellent news. <laughs> yeah. A miniature giant space hamster, Boo, is a friend to all. <laughs> so yeah, pretty funny, pretty funny conversation. Uh, anyway, also what I wanted to mention is that uh, I'm just going to teleport here. There is no merchant right now, but uh, there are a couple of merchants like that. Uh, there's two notable ones in the bridge district and one halfling scroll merchant uh, here uh, that only appear at certain times of the day. And he appears kind of like in the evening uh, and he actually has access to many good scrolls and he's very easy to miss out on because, you know, he's standing in um, in such a spot that you would pretty much like never visit. But uh, we are going to rob him of his scrolls <laughs> at, at a later point. All right, so let's uh, teleport back and uh, check this circus. Yes, this will not There's also going to be, you, be? you know, uh, funny conversations between like Harold and Mrs. Harold a uh, married couple that came to see the circus, but apparently something happened and uh, the show is not going to continue. If we talk to Harold, there's going to be a slightly different conversation between them. And they came all the way from Trade Meet, which is a city 
or a town that we're going to visit later in Baldur's Gate 2. Yeah, there's some kind of a problem. Yeah, a rather showy display of magic happened. But apparently it was also dangerous. It wasn't really a show, but something serious happened. <laughs> we could have been struck by lightning or fire. It was horrendous. Yeah, these poor men in black. These are actually not going to be men in black, but shadows that she is re referring to. A new type of enemy in Baldur's Gate 2. Yes, dear. <laughs> Alright, this moose here and squirrel, they're, they're supposedly a reference to Rocky and Bullwinkle. Anyway, this guy here is pretty interesting as well, has a unique conversation. This hawker, of course, wants us to visit the adventurer Mart that we're going to visit later. Uh, that was Khalid's uh, selection sound, by the way, because he also uh, will have a little problem with a stutter. And he seems to be a little uh, scared of what happened in the circus again. We can ask him what happened. And he's a the tiger tamer in the circus. But yeah, apparently, when the show started, in quotations, uh, the bodies of, of everyone begin shifting right before his eyes. The tent disappeared, being replaced by some kind of illusion, I guess, and he managed to escape, fortunately. <clears throat> yeah, so, yeah, like the skin of people was melting. It's basically some kind of a powerful spell and change the appearance, at least, of uh, the people inside. Alright, so we're going to check that out a little later. Also, another kind of thing that uh, might be missed, although it is not that... Uh, not that... Uh, it's not a secret, really. It's it's pretty well known, I think, but it's it's uh, kind of weird that they would just call this guy Storekeep. He's actually Mahir, and... Um, You'll find no better prices in ours. And he is actually involved in upgrading a certain item, a certain horn, uh, that he can upgrade twice. And uh, you would maybe not even think to, to talk to him because he's just called Storekeep, instead of just calling him Mahir uh, to draw attention that he is supposed to be special. Uh, there's going to be like a couple of like, you know, comments and simple conversations. This guy is a painting vendor. My time is quick, so be brief. Nothing to see for us here. Uh, there are different like containers, but they are basically all empty. Yes. Here is also like a town crier. Alright, Minsk is very chatty today. Uh, these town criers, I am not going to, I am not going to talk to them uh, more than this, I guess. But they actually provide. Uh, some info about um, different events going on at at the time, so we can like ask uh, a little bit more about what's going on. Speak. And yeah, since uh, you know the, those are the beginning episodes, there's going to be a couple of things like that where we're going to be exploring the different districts and you know seeing the unique conversations. But uh, you know, soon enough we're going to be back to full time action. But I really do want to showcase some of these conversations because they are pretty funny. This chest uh, actually is locked. Um, there are basically two chests like that. Uh, this one and the one near uh, Myra over here that is locked. And uh, unfortunately, Yoshimo's 65 open locks is not uh, enough to open these two chests. But they just don't con contain uh, like anything too special. Just some like minor goodies, uh, gems and stuff like that. Just uh, a little bit of gold, basically. So here's Lady Ophel and Lord Ophel next to her. And this is going to be pretty funny. My time is quick, so be brief, commoner. And uh, they're going to try to to figure out uh, the place of our origin. We're not Kalimshite, not Cormirian, and not nearly enough class for that. And not nearly civilized enough to be from Waterdeep, darling. Now you're just being silly. <laughs> Certainly not Amnion. They don't look half so wealthy as to be Amnion. Well then, why am I speaking to them? <laughs> Agreed. 
excuse us, but we've decided to snub you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I really like that one. Uh, all right, so now I think we're going to go and check out the circus finally, because this is going to provide us with some action. So here, let, let's uh, make a conversation with this guard first. He actually initiates it himself. And yeah, for our safety, apparently the, the circus was closed. Yeah, not exactly sure what happened, but some kind of a serious problem. And uh, everyone who went in to investigate never uh, returned. So we can handle ourselves, and apparently that convinces him <laughs> uh, to let us in. Of course, we have some warnings uh, from Ushimo. Also, if you take uh, talk to this boy, there's a little quest. Giren. Apparently, his mother is still inside. And um, <laughs> it's a tough break. No, I'll go and see if uh, we can find your mother. All right, just calm down and be brave. Yeah, we must help this child. Yes. This is not the only child that Minsk is going to want to help. And without any weird implications, but uh, his kind of uh, the only personal quest that he—it's not even a personal quest, but only like one quest that he urges you to uh, uh, go to, and kind of like a timed thing for Minsk—is uh, uh, later on when a um, boy from um, from Trade Meet actually, I think, um, approaches us and asks for for help. Was it for? Trade meat, or is it? No, that's from the Umar Umar Hills village, from Imnisvale. Anyway, uh, upon stepping into this tent door, we can see that you know it's a completely different area. We have this like different tent, somewhere like in the middle of a pool of water, and this bridge here. So let's approach. And here we have yet another genie. I see a wayfarer has come to amuse Kala. You must answer a riddle naturally. Uh, so, why would I want to pass over this bridge? Because it is a symbolic... Um, because it is symbolic of your progression to enlightenment and understanding, fool. So, unfortunately, the only way we can kill him, and that is what he deserves for calling us a fool, <laughs> the only way we can kill him is to actually fail both of his riddles. Um, basically, we have to answer his riddle here, and uh, if we fail at this one, he will present us with a, with another one, and then if we fail at that one as well, he would go hostile and attack us, and that's the only way to kill him. But uh, we're just going to answer correctly. And we get almost 20,000 experience for that. While well, killing him is only worth 5,000, although it's much more satisfactory, I guess. Yes. Right, now before we proceed, do we have any small potions? Yes. Let us use some of them to heal up. Hmm. What is it? And uh, when we go in, there's going to be an encounter awaiting us. So I want to... Well, uh, actually, not just yet, but... Th there's going to be a little encounter, but the main one that's... Not really dangerous, but I want to be healed up so as to... Who are you? Oh, whoever you are, you must flee this place at once! He's, he's killed everyone else who has come into this place! Almost! Oh, please, run! Well, just to finish my thought, uh, th there's going to be an encounter where we can actually suffer some some damage. Uh, anyway, here we have like a very weird ogre talking in this feminine, sweet voice. <laughs> right, who's killed everyone? Or actually, I'm not going anywhere until I get an explanation. So yeah, she's going to explain that she's airy, apparently, and she's in the circus with her uncle, Quail. And if you remember Quail from Baldur's Gate 1, that was the gnome cleric mage. That was uh, kind of a bratty. <laughs> and uh, he has a very different attitude in Baldur's Gate 2, which uh, some people don't like that, you know, some some returning characters in Baldur's Gate 2 are a little different or a little too different from their Baldur's Gate 1 selves. And uh, Quail is kind of like that. And uh, also, uh, that's why, you know, here we're at the circus, uh, which apparently Quail is an employee here. And uh, that's why the NPC project in Baldur's Gate 1 uh, that one component that relocates him from in front of Baldur's Gate City um, to the Nashville's Carnival, uh, you know, that really makes sense for him because, you know, here he works in a circus and then he was all, uh, in Baldur's Gate 1. They also place him at the Carnival 
where you know supposedly he might also you know be involved in uh, some in some way yeah so chaos happened it's just an illusion apparently uh, the minions serve Kala whoever that is oh we actually get the answer he's an illusionist in the circus but I don't know how he was able to do all this yes and there's going to be some kind of a mysterious um, source of his power that he was able to uh, create an illusion this powerful and this all-encompassing so she's apparently chained but the chains are invisible they're magical so this is like really super far-fetched but she actually tells the truth <laughs> But yeah, it's like, oh yeah, invisible chains. Sure, dude. <laughs> uh, yeah, we can't dispel the illusions because the spells are too powerful. Alright, so we want to release her. And apparently the key is in the form of a sword. And uh, the, the people are apparently monsters. And, you know, like I said, you would... Like, I would never ever trust <laughs> someone who, who told me all this. But it's actually the way to go. So if we progress to the west here, there's going to be a spider, which is not a monster. This is actually that boy's mom yes, from outside. And oh, I am a simple woman. You don't seem like any creature I've encountered before. I'm not a creature. Well, technically we are all creatures of different types, aren't we? Who are you then? So yeah, she's Hannah. Uh, came to the circus uh, with her son. And of course... Uh, You know, she got turned into the spider because of that illusion spell. Uh, I think I might have clicked a little bit too quickly. I try to not do it so quickly, so that's to, of course, give you the option to pause and read for yourself. But yeah, basically telling us everything that we've already managed to learn about what happened. Yeah, so we can assure her that her son is safe outside. And these two people actually are going to uh, attack us and... Uh, turn turns out they are actually orcs. Now that we like fight with them a little bit, they turn into their proper form. We received a little bit of damage, but not a big deal. And one of them has the sword, which is the key. Oh, and the random drop here. I have a friend scroll. Yes. All right. <clears throat> so now we can we will be able to free Eri of this what illusion this and from her from? chains. You have the key, or, or rather the sword. Please, please give it to me, and, and I can be rid of this illusionary form at last. <laughs> and I love this response. response. Not so fast. How much will it give me for it? <laughs> I'm not going to use that, but it's funny. My hands, my skin, it's real again. Oh, thank you, Beovar. I want to spine quail and stop Kala before he does any more harm. So yeah, she's a recruitable companion. Now she's back to her true elven self. And uh, we can recruit her. And always um, in Baldur's Gate 2, whenever we recruit a new NPC for the first time, we're always going to have these options to tell them, this is just for role-playing purposes, to tell them either about that we're, our ultimate goal is to rescue Imoen, and that will involve confronting perhaps the Kald Wizards, or that we are hunting, you know, a powerful mage, Irenicus, to take vengeance upon him. So we can tell that our ultimate goal is, of course, to get Imoen back. Alright, so now we have uh, Eri in our party. What can I do? Eri is... Uh, I, I like her very much. Although, in our playthrough, we're not going to keep her for long. It's just that, you know, I have a different idea for our party composition. But uh, we're going to keep her for a while. Uh, she's a multi-class cleric mage. Uh, which is a kind of a, a, an illegal combination for her because she's an elf and elves normally cannot be cleric mages. Um, but the, the thing about this uh, class combination, what's really unique about it, it's a very fun class combo, uh, very spell-oriented one, with many like different buffs that uh, you can uh, cast on, on you. But the unique thing about it is that you can use the mage and different sequencer and contingency spells and put cleric spells in them. So. There's even more options for, uh, you know, your creativity when it comes to uh, these spells. Of course, she has a level up to do because we have that TOB style NPCs, so that she can, uh, you know, get a little bit... Uh, because she got brought up to our experience camp from Baldur's Gate 1, 
Her stats are a little bit all over the place, but, you know, she has good dexterity, she has, like, decent wisdom and intelligence uh, for her needs. And uh, that's basically it. She is supposed to be an Avariel, a winged elf, but she lost her wings, and we can learn more about that through conversations with her, especially if you romance her, because she is a uh, potential romance if you play a male character. Um, and uh, in the circus, like, she was confined in such tight spaces that her wings withered and waned, and so eventually they were cut off, and that's kind of a, like a major thing about her, uh, her loss of uh, her flight ability through that. So we can quickly level her up a little bit. And uh, yeah, now she's level 7 in both classes. And uh, we can check out her spells a little bit, just some standard selection that I'm not going to change right now, maybe before we rest. Of course, the disadvantage of her being a cleric mage multi-class is that her experience gets split into both of these classes, so she's never going to progress as quickly or as high in uh, any of these classes. So she's not really fit to be your primary mage, but a good support kind of secondary mage that, that uh, she can, you know, perform well at. Because with mages you really want access to like high-level spells and some high-level mages. But with clerics, she can be your only cleric, that doesn't really matter all that much at least uh, for me, or how I play. And she has one identify, and she has slow, which is really nice, and stone skin. We're also going to change her colors slightly, and she also has the, this traveler's robe uh, for Senashira, <laughs> once she dual classes into yes, a mage. If it must be done. I am here to serve. Alright, so this pleasure slave is going to like continue this Kala's pretentious uh, setup here. Be thee not of impure mind, for surely Lord Kala shall destroy thee. Be thee not of impure heart, or thou wilt surely destroy thyself. Kala is the one ruler, the one true being. I've come to see the circus, not some half-dressed tart spouting dire warnings. <laughs> I just have to go with that one. The circus is no more. Kala's power has removed its baneful influence. Question not Lord Kara, Kala, mortal. Where can I find Kala? Worry not, lady, for Kala has already found thee. Continue on thy path. Blah, blah, blah. You know what we do with characters like these? No! Yes! We managed to kill her before she escaped. <laughs> so. Oh yeah, Ari. That, that was a great thing. She, she approves. <laughs> and of course, you know, it's just 10 experience, no loot or anything, but the satisfaction is the most important. Anyway, we're going to pre-buff her with stone skin because once we go like uh, through this door here, there's going to be uh, quite a few opponents and that are going to attack us. And I want uh, Eri to actually, Eri, do you have memorized dispel magic? No, but we have a scroll of dispel magic, and there's also a scroll in a vase in that next room. And this is going to be very useful, and she's going to cast it. What is it? Let's just give her a couple of seconds so that her round can finish, and let us proceed. So here, uh, there's going to be two types of opponents. These shadows, that are real opponents, and these werewolves, that are illusions. However, in SCS, I don't know whether it's because of a bug or an, an omission of some sort, or whether it was intended to be like that, but um, uh, generally in the unmodded game, these werewolves are going to like come up to us and attack us, but their uh, attacks would do zero damage unless we like acknowledge their existence and attack them ourselves. However, in SCS, they actually always do damage to us, so they are kind of dangerous because they can do like around 15 to 20 damage, around that kind of uh, amount. And of course, our Kensai ladies are completely unprotected, their armor class is bad and whatnot. That's why I pre-buffed uh, Aerie with stone skin so that she doesn't get interrupted. And uh, they are illusions, so when they die through damage, they will just disappear and grant us no experience. But uh, the upside to that is that uh, they can be removed by casting that uh, Dispel Magic. So we're going to just uh, focus our attention on that shadow, uh, but not with everyone, because the shadows need magical weapons to be damaged. So uh, Jahira, for example, cannot really do anything to them. And so she and Yoshimo are going to focus this um, werewolf, and I'm going to pull more werewolves to us uh, from across the room. Oh yeah, Harry, of course. Yeah, that's another um, 
additional line that characters have in Baldur's Gate 2 when their weapon isn't effective and when their uh, spell gets interrupted and there, there's quite a few more voice lines. Anyway, you can just prepare yourself. Alright, so I just want to get all of these uh, werewolves to us. And Jahira needs to heal up. And Eri is going to cast that Dispel Magic. Boom, all of these werewolves are gone now, and just the shadows are left. I can dance on the head of a pin as well. The shadows are a little annoying because they temporarily drain strength, but fortunately it didn't happen yes, for us here. What is it without doubt? And in this vase, there is another dispel magic scroll that you can just pick up from here and cast to dispel all these werewolves. And there's web also. Uh, so we cleared out this room. And now we are ready to proceed to the final, final area. So another genie comes up to congratulate us. Kala is most amused by your progress. Alright, we're ready to proceed. I forgot to change Eri's script, so she uh, automatically attacked that shadow and talked over Kala. So Kala here referred to Eri as his beast. <laughs> You're not what? You're not my beast? Oh, but you are. All of you are, don't you see? Kala has an awesome dying sound, by the way. I hope we'll be able to clearly hear it. <laughs> and what have you done to my Uncle Quail? Yeah, Quail is li right here in the form of a jelly or a slime. Yeah, and now she says that some of these beasts are real and some are illusions. There's no way to tell until they hit you. So it's the same thing with the werewolves and shadows. Yes, it's a regular three-ring circus, isn't it, my beasts? Now go ahead and tear each other apart. All right, so here, I'll help however before I, I forget. Can. That's done, and we're just going to go straight for Kala and uh, kill him go for the eyes. and end this farce. Go for the eyes. No scream <laughs> and that dying sound. <laughs> I love those. I have planned this for too long, only to have my plans shattered by some inbred northern adventurers. I, I just wanted to be respected. <coughs> You've killed me, destroyed Kala with your misplaced morals and beastly greed for adventure. <laughs> beastly greed for adventure. So yeah, we can ask what brought all this. Yeah, I'm Kala, an illusionist. I was made a clown mage for the pleasure of the tall folk, but I bided my time, and I was promised a world I could rule. In Amn, a mage is a criminal and a gnome is a spectacle. In this tent, in my world, Kala was the master when none would dare to laugh. So yeah, he's he's been uh, ridiculed, I guess, and bullied and laughed at for who knows how long in this circus. And uh, yeah, that, that that's what happens. He was like pushed too far and then snapped, going to like extreme lengths to get that respect he wanted. Yeah, so it's kind of like yet another a kind of true to real life story that Baldur's Gate is able to deliver here. What can I do? Oh, why didn't that trigger properly? Quickly and We're supposed to be what is it? Without a little conversation that triggers here between Eri and Quail. Uh, why didn't that trigger properly, man? And they're supposed to have a couple of comments where, uh, you know, Quail urges Eri to, uh, like, leave the circus and go and see the world with our adventuring party. Yeah, you, you can ask him about the Shadow Thieves and the Cald Wizards. 
and he's going to tell us that you know the the only organization that can really challenge the cowled wizards are the shadow thieves, giving us a little clue. Now oh, that's that's really unfortunate. That Uncle Quail, you're okay. Okay, force talking to the for the win, Uncle Quail. Ha, I knew Kala would trip over himself eventually. I'm just pleased he despised me enough to play with me rather than dispose of me like some of the others. Oh, Quail. <laughs> anyway, I think you need to find out, my dear. I've taught you everything I can. It's time, Eri. Time for you to learn the rest of New Your Own. You're the wisest and the smartest and the kindest man I'll ever know. I wasn't always, my dear, so that's kind of a reference to his Baldur's Gate 1 persona, I guess. Alright, so, yeah, like I said, I really like Eri. She's this kind of really good-hearted, naive uh, person yes. that some people find annoying, but I don't at all. And there's also a cool little mod called Wings that expands uh, on Eri, gives her a little, like, side quests here and there and additional comments. It's a pretty cool one. Uh, anyway, from Kala we get quite a bit of uh, very notable loot. I can, like, give her more bullets. We get some basic scrolls here, but uh, the most important one here is Stone Skin. So we get access to it right away. A very important spell. That's very nice. We get some potions of invisibility too. And now we have this uh, belt, uh, also a familiar uh, one from Baldur's Gate 1. The belt that gives us a uh, bonus of 3 against missile and piercing uh, damage, as you can see here. So I guess uh, Eri is going to get that for now, uh, because she's the most vulnerable to like getting interrupted by like ranged weapons and such. And here, uh, I'm not going to... well, actually, let's identify that with her Identify spell. This is the Ring of Human Influence, and this is why having natural charisma, like high natural charisma in Baldur's Gate 2, is kind of useless, because they give you at the very, very beginning of the game this ring that just sets your charisma to 18, and also has a charm person on it once per day. So. Yeah, uh, it's kind of unfortunate, although still having natural <coughs> natural high charisma like we have 19 here, uh, it also is uh, kind of convenient, because um, if you had lower charisma and you wanted to have 18, of course you, you would switch to, you know, before making purchases, but it also influences some conversations, so if you wanted to have it all the time on, you would either lose a ring slot here and you would only be able to you know use one ring and there's plenty of good rings in Baldur's Gate 2 or you would have to like keep switching in and out before like conversations and before doing shopping and stuff so it is still like more convenient for us to um, just have the natural charisma and we've we've got a lot of um, I guess benefit out of that in, in Baldur's Gate 1 but yeah in Baldur's Gate 2 having high charisma is like your least priority really so we're going to get this ring just so we can charm someone to uh, Kirinai, I guess. She's going to be our prime target for these kind of usable type of items. And uh, yeah, now we're done with the circus. And now we're basically done with Joaquin's Promenade. This is, again, a little bit of a longer episode. Uh, so I thank you for watching. We're going to continue in the next one. So see you there.